If you turn with me to Romans 4, we're going to talk about Abraham. Oh, what God has showed me about Abraham. I want to begin in verse 1. What shall we say then? That Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, in other words, he is the father of us all, has found. It says, for if Abraham were justified by works, he has whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. I love the way the NIV says it. It says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him. Ever get a store credit? Ever go to a store and they give you a credit? It says, Abraham believed God, and God credited to Abraham as righteousness. As righteousness. It says, now to him that worketh is a reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, to him that worketh not. Do you know Abraham didn't even have any word to read? Abraham didn't have Genesis and, and Deuteronomy and all those things. He didn't have those. Those weren't written until Moses. Do you know Abraham didn't have the law? Abraham could not obey the law even if he wanted to. There wasn't any. The law wasn't there. Moses hadn't shown up for, yet for 400 years, but God talked to Abraham. God talked to Abraham. It says, unto him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith, his faith, his trust in what God told him is counted, credited to him for righteousness. Now, I want us to go to verse 15. It says, because the law worketh wrath, for no law is, there is no transgression. Now look at this next thing. Therefore, therefore, it is of faith. It is of faith that it might be by grace. It says, to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. All the seed. It says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise. The promise might be sure to all the seed. Do you know you're part of that seed? Do you know you're part of that seed? It said, not only to that which is of the law, but to that also which is the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now look at this, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. God speaking to Abraham. God speaking to Abraham. He said, I have made thee a father of many nations, before whom he even believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Twenty-five years. Twenty-five years. God put Abraham on this earth. He called Abraham out from, any, from his family. He said, come out. Come out. Leave your homeland. Come out and obey me. Come out and obey me. No law, no written word, just what God had told him. And God calls him out and he makes him a promise. And we'll go into that verse 18. It says, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. God, Jehovah, the father, the God of all gods, told a man, the God that created everything you see talked to a man and he said, thy seed, in thy seed, all the world will be blessed. That's what he said to Abraham. And for 25 years, 25 years, Abraham believed. Every day, listen to this, every day, Abraham got a little bit older. Every day, his body got a little more dead. A little more dead. Every day it got a little worse. And he wouldn't stop believing. Every day it got a little worse. And he wouldn't stop believing. No. Every day that promise God said to him. Abraham had to, had to make a decision. Are you going to believe? Are you going to believe today when it was worse than yesterday? Are you going to believe today when you're more dead today than you were yesterday? Are you going to believe? Abraham believed. 
Abraham believed. He believed. Verse 18, who against hope? You know what that means? You know what that says? Hopeless. Hopeless. The situation was hopeless. Hopeless. Isn't that wonderful? The situation was hopeless. Hopeless. But Abraham believed anyway. But he believed anyway. He hoped anyway. The situation was absolutely hopeless. And he believed anyway. And he believed anyway. 25 years it was hopeless. Every day it got worse. And he believed anyway. He hoped against hopeless. Why? Because God spoke to him. Because God made him a promise. Let's go to verse 19. Uh, let's see. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. That was, his, that was what his hope was in. So shall thy seed be. Abraham, you have no body. You're almost dead. He hoped anyway. It's hopeless, Abraham. He hoped anyway. He believed. He believed it was absolutely hopeless, and he believed. He believed. Ever been in a hopeless situation? I have. You believe. You make the decision every day. You believe. You believe. Verse 19, and being not weak in faith, being not weak in faith, being not weak in faith, Faith. He made the decision to believe. It was hopeless. He believed. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Now dead. Hopeless. Abraham, 25 years ago, maybe not today, your body's dead. Hopeless. He believed anyway. He did not look he did not consider, he did not consider his body. He did not consider it was dead. He didn't consider it. He didn't consider Sarah's body. It's dead. He didn't consider it. He hoped against hope. And it says, when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Not only he had to believe for himself, he's got a wife over there. And you know, sometimes she wasn't such a great wife. He believed anyway. The situation was hopeless, and it was getting worse every day, and he hoped anyway. And it says, he staggered not, staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Staggered not at it, at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God in a hopeless situation. It's too late, Abraham. It's just too late. No, he believed anyway. He believed anyway. It says, and being fully persuaded what he had promised, he was able also to perform. To perform. Believing God was able to do what God promised. Trusting God was able to do what God had promised even when it got worse, even when his body died, even when it was hopeless. He trusted God anyway. He chose to believe. 25 years. And it says, and therefore it was imputed unto him for righteousness, credited to him for righteousness. And what happened after those 25 years? What happened after he hoped against the hopelessness? What happened after he never let go of the promise? He got the promise. When it looked like it was absolutely never going to happen, he got the promise. He got the promise. And Isaac was born. But do you know what amazes me? Oh, the wisdom, the wisdom of God and the strength of God. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. Do you know what happened with Abraham? He not only got Isaac. He not only got Isaac. He got Jesus. He got Jesus. Turn with me to Galatians 3. Amen. <clears throat> 
It says, verse 6, even as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness, credited to him as righteousness. Know you therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Now go down to verse 14. It goes, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, us, through Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if he be confirmed, no man disannulleth nor added to. Now to Abraham and to his seed were the promises made. And he saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, as to thy seed, which is Christ. Because Abraham believed. Because for 25 years, when it was hopeless, he believed anyway. He not only got Isaac, he brought forth Jesus. He brought forth Jesus. He brought forth Jesus. In the line of Abraham was Jesus. In the line of the man that met him in, in Genesis. And Abraham killed a calf for him. In that line was Jesus. Isaac came and down the road came Jesus. Down the road came Jesus. Do you got Jesus in you? If you got Jesus in you, you are a daughter or a son of Abraham. You are the children of Abraham. Amen. You are the children of the man that believed against hope for 25 years. Every day he had to believe. Every day he had to believe. And you got him. You got him. You are the children of Abraham. I am a child of Abraham. And now I want to show you about the love of God. Turn with me to John 8. I love this. You talk about the love of God. God put Abraham there. He had Abraham there. He had to have a man there that would believe him. He had to have a man to believe to bring forth Isaac. He had to have a man there to believe to bring forth Isaac. But not only Isaac, he had to have a man there to bring forth Jesus. Jesus had to have a body, and it had to come from Abraham. Now, what did God do for Abraham? Jesus speaks it in verse 55. I'm gonna, Jesus is speaking. He said, yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I know God not, I should be a liar like unto you, but I know him and keep his saying. And look at this next verse. verse. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it. He saw it. God let him see. God let him see Jesus' day. God let him see Jesus' day. Amen. Take a look, Abraham, what you work for. Take a look at what you're believing brought forth. And he says, and he saw it, and he was glad. That word is rejoiced. Abraham got to see it. Abraham got to see it. That is the Amen. love of God. And we are children of Abraham. We have the seed in us. We have the seed in us. If you got Jesus in you, you are.